Okay, we're back here live at the Fluent Conference. I'm John Furrier from SiliconAngle.com. Joined by my co-host Jeff Frick. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We're the Fluent Conference. We'll be at the Velocity Conference. We'll be at the Strata Conference. We'll be at OSCON. We'll be at all the O'Reilly conferences, and we will we will do our multi-day live broadcasting where we talk to executives, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, whoever has the signal from the noise. We want to extract that and share that openly with you. This is the Cube. And our next guest is uh, Daniel Regal. 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 Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. You guys have a very hot company. Um, tell us about your company. I don't want to steal your thunder because I want everyone to be listening. Uh, Scoot Networks is a scooter sharing network. So we like to, a scooter sharing network. We like to say that uh, we're half the price of taxis and twice as fast as public transit and four times as fun. <laughs> uh, we're only in San Francisco Good right metrics. now. I like the metrics. <laughs> It was interesting because last night, uh, John, we were walking the floor and they had they had all of the um, kind of startup showcase, right? And you guys were, were one of the participants. So how did the how did the contest go? Oh well, we were uh, we were one of the winners. Oh, awesome! Congratulations. Thank you. But it's it, I think it's just a great concept. How we talk a lot about computing service on demand and resource on demand and storage on demand, and, and now you and, and and Zipcar are some of the early adopters, really starting to sell transportation, really on demand as a service as opposed to buying an asset and depreciating your asset and maintaining that asset. Now you get it when you need it. Yeah, exactly. So you know, well, we can't, we coined a new uh, a new term for this. We're we're a uh, a SaaS company, scooter as a service, uh, <laughs> and and you're absolutely right. And what, what we're finding is more and more our our members are actually looking to not have to be burdened with owning another thing. Right? right. They have to maintain it. They have to worry about getting parking tickets, moving it. Um, so people love us for that. That we take care of a lot of those details. They can focus on what's more important. So I mean, the big thing I love about your company, the reason why I want to steal your thunder, is because we've seen our earlier interviews with Brady Farr. She's working on an Internet of Things. And the big thing that we love about software right now, and big data in particular, is that the everyday stuff is becoming instrumented in a way that is changing the user experiences. And you know, you see Uber, that's obviously an office example of town cars, what they're doing, and, and they're making a lot of money disrupting the marketplace. Um, and just, but this idea that everyday life is now going to be impacted by technology is here and it's coming pretty fast. So, what have you learned in, in your startup here and your in your venture about about some of the technical challenges? I mean, because scooters are great right now, but you can track them. Okay, so that's check. So, what other things has technology and software enabled you guys to do or are looking at doing? Uh, well, you know, the probably the the key innovation that so technology is everything at, at Scoot, and um, we started out observing this amazing technical innovation that recently surfaced, which is the electric scooter. And the electric scooter is a very affordable vehicle. It's actually unlike cars where the electric version is more expensive than the gas version. Electric scooters are actually less expensive than corresponding gas scooters. Now you couple that with the supercomputer that we all carry around in our pockets and you can get this really quite a premium experience without a very without a whole lot of capital investment, without putting a lot of risk on the line. One of the things with the scooter is it's exposed. So, you know, when you're parking it on the street, if you had an expensive computer dashboard, you get it damaged. Um, so we love the fact that we can take advantage of the best of these different yeah, technologies. Yeah, so you decouple the expensive risk device, the embedded terminal. Which we all pack on our own yeah, anyway, right? You're using uh, our, our device, yeah. our network. It's funny, really Je Jeb network. York, who's the fa um, at the 49ers, uh, was at talking to us um, a couple of weeks ago in Orlando, and he says, you know, we don't want to invest in a $60 million scoreboard because our customers are paying their own way with their own screen. So what they've done is they've actually optimized the technology experience to work the other way versus, say, Cowboy Stadium, which, you know, he's like, hey, these scoreboards will be obsolete in a year. So why do I want to invest my money when my own customers are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on multiple smartphones? So again, this is the, this is changing the dynamics of business. So what else have you learned around, around uh, your venture? Uh, let's see. So we've learned a lot about uh, what, where, when people ride, what people want to do uh, when they're riding. So in fact, for what Scoot is offering, people really like to use it for commuting. Um, turns out that it, it, I think the first time I, most people hear about it, they think, oh, I'd love to joyride on it, um, which is great. And people usually do some joyriding, and they, they, that's actually that's also a, a use case. But people really like it for commuting because a city like San Francisco, not every area is covered that well by public transit. And we can fill in those gaps and basically give you point-to-point, -point, you know, personalized transportation 
for something that costs more like a public transit. So go to the URL Scoots Network, S C O O T Networks.com. You can see what they do. They have little pictures. You put your phone there. So let's talk about some of the tech involved. Obviously, you got to track these things. At, you know, we have GPSs. What other tech is involved in the, in the devices, and how you guys put this value chain together? Uh, so yeah, so we take we take a scooter that comes fairly some. It's a little bit customized, but it's fairly standard off the factory floor, um, and we replace some of the parts. We upgrade them for higher durability, um, and we also uh, install a special control circuit board in it. That's what interfaces with the scooter's uh, electronics, so we know what the scooter's doing and where it's moving, whether the lights are on, all the, all the different uh, aspects of the scooter. And then we have a, a GPS modem in the uh, in the scooter and. The, I say GPS slash and a modem. So uh, we know the location of the scooters as, and they, it uploads data about the scooter's performance. So how's the battery doing? How's the scooter functioning uh, to our servers? So at all times we know whether the scooter is uh, doing well, whether it's you know fallen off in, into the river, uh, essentially, uh, anything we want to know about it. So it's 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 great because we've talked to a lot about in the, the example of the industrial internet, right? Should GE be selling engines to aircraft companies, or should they be selling jet propulsion? And who's in a better who's really in a better position to optimize maintenance and those types of things? The guy that made the engine, or the people that are operating it? And it's interesting because now you're you're doing all that operational stuff, but presumably in a much more efficient way, a much more effective way, much more cost effective way than if I have to worry about changing my own uh, motor oil and, and keeping the up, upkeep on my scooter. I guess the, do they have motor oil in an electric scooter? They don't. Oh, they don't. Very clean. You could you could even take them into your house. So talk a little bit about the business. Model. Model. So we all know kind of how buying or renting a, a vehicle works. How does this work in this world? So Scoot's a membership organization. So because it's a scooter, there, there's a, a safety component. So we make sure that everybody who joins Scoot and has the, the privileges to ride has been trained in how to use a scooter. So uh, we, everybody attends an orientation session in which we teach them safety, rules of the road, how to, act, how to behave responsibly. Um, then you remember, you pull up your mobile phone, um, pull up our app, find a scooter that's near you, uh, pick it out, reserve it. When you get to the scooter, you press a button on your phone that turns it on, off you go. Uh, you ride around, you can either return it to the same garage or in many cases you can actually return it to a different location. So you can really use it almost like a taxi service. Um, pricing is extremely reasonable. The, the basic plan, you pay $5 for the first hour and a dollar every hour after that. Nights are, are 50 cents a an dollar. hour. That's right. One, a buck. A buck. What can you buy with a buck in this town? Not much. Can't even buy a beer much. for a dollar anymore. <laughs> used to be happy hour for a buck for a beer back in the day when I was in college. And then what um, happens like if they park it and get a parking ticket? I assume the scooter's registered back to you guys. You get the sixty dollar parking ticket uh, courtesy of San Francisco. So that, that's if you actually get a parking ticket. Okay. Well, in this town, they'll get you. <laughs> scooters do attract park t parking tickets, and unfortunately, plus they're, they're red too. So <laughs> they're the same tickets that cars get. Actually, there's no discount, which is something we'd like to maybe get the government to change. So you pass that through, though, obviously, to the So customer. it's the responsibility of the, the customer. Unfortunately, if we told them that we'd, uh, we'd pay for their parking tickets, it would become a mess less economically well. advantageous offering. So tell us, what are you doing here at the Fluent Conference? Conference about developers, conference about UI, user experience. Obviously, you have a new device. Is that part of it? What are, what, what's their main thrust here? I think what caught the eyes of the organizers is the fact that we're using a JavaScript application to uh, to provide the, the mobile phone experience for our customers. So when you pull up the app and find scooters, you're looking at a JavaScript based map. Um, a lot of people would go straight to a, a native application for that. Um, but given our tech team, of, of whom you are speaking to half, um, <laughs> we don't have the resources to build uh, uh, an iOS app, an Android app, plus an app that would support all the other platforms that exist out there. So there is no, there's no doubt that we have to build uh, a web experience. And so the question is, do you build a web experience and these other apps? Yeah. We'd like to do that one day. Um, but we actually have set ourselves a really ambitious goal, which is that we'd like to make a web app that's so good that nobody asks us for a native app. Um, and did you start with the web app, or did you start with the mobile app? Uh, sorry, I guess I should be. I should say mobile app. It, mobile it is a mobile app. web app. Okay, but it okay. works on a browser as well. Okay. Well, you know, Uber started out humble beginnings too. San Francisco here, a couple town car actually, you know, Benzes for the found <laughs> guys. Then turned into town cars. We all know that story. <laughs> Doing extremely well. Again, this is a great example. Thanks for coming on the Cube. This is the new expectations, new user experiences, technologies enabling 
different ways to organize using the data, using the, the form factors. Uh, congratulations on all your success and thanks for coming on inside the cube. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is uh, Silicon Angles the Cube. We'll be right back with our next interview, next segment after this short break. Stay with us. We're here at the Fluent Conference. This is the Cube. We'll be right back. Thanks.